we have had as Richard mentioned, we have uh, four, three different physical campuses across Europe, which is Barcelona, Spain, Geneva in uh, Switzerland, and Munich in Germany. We also have the presence of a digital campus, um, but uh, which was rebranded from the online campus very recently um, and has been uh, around for the last 10 years. So I'm just going to move on with the presentation. Excuse me, there's been a little bit of technical glitch. There we go. So yeah, just a little bit of information about the Barcelona campus, about the city, just generally speaking, as well as economically. Uh, Barcelona, the campus is first of all located in the heart of the city, we're five minutes away from the financial center of the city. Um, and we're literally on the main fashion and luxury um, street in Barcelona. We have two different campuses, as you can see on the screen. So if you decide to join the Barcelona campus, you're basically looking at joining the Diagonal campus, which is on the left-hand side of the screen. The right-hand side of the screen is the Grandio campus, where we also occupy uh, a few floors. Uh, we're located about 10 minutes away from the FC Barcelona Camp New Stadium, which might be of great interest to some of you uh, enthusiastic football fans out there. Um, and I think Barcelona is a great city for anyone who wants to do fashion, finance, sports management, um, international relations as well. Um, it's overall a really, really nice city. For students arriving from India, I think the climatic conditions are excellent because it doesn't get overly cold during the winter and the summers, of course, equally hot as um, India. Uh, economically speaking, we have um, Barcelona, which has the uh, highest GDP in Spain. Um, you have a lot of uh, startups every year in the city of Barcelona, on an average about 1,000 startups per year. So it's a very entrepreneurial city as well. Um, host city for a lot of global tech events. Um, ranked has uh, the number six um, study um, abroad uh, from a worldwide perspective. Um, and uh, it's ranked number four in terms of innovation in Europe. Uh, secondly, you have the Geneva campus, which is uh, again located downtown. So as you might hear me saying very often, all our campuses are located downtown, very close to the city center in very prominent locations as well. Um, so this is the Geneva campus. We recently shifted into a new building about a year, two years ago. Um, and we occupy um, the ground floor and then the first four floors in the building. Uh, as you can see, very airy classrooms, um, you know, um, a really great, um, you know, um, technology used in the classrooms as well. Um, our professors are obviously looking at, uh, you know, uh, teaching very small class sizes or so maximum of 30 students per class. Uh, a very dynamic classroom as well. Um, students from all over, very international. Um, setting in the classroom. Uh, we also have the Jada, which is um, the highest fountain in, in the world, and that's located about 10 minutes away from our campus. Um, again, in terms of Geneva, it's a very eccentric city. Um, I, we would call this the VIP campus because, um, you know, the students that you get on this campus um, are on a different league as compared to the Munich and the Barcelona campus. Highest average salaries in Europe, surrounded by a lot of international organizations such as WHO, UN, a lot of banking in the, the whole banking industry is located uh, as well along around the campus. You have um, Credit Suisse, which is uh, a stone's throw away from the campus. You have UB, uh, UBS as well, um, you know, BNP Paribas, who has their investment banking sector in Geneva. So anyone looking at anything related to finance, accounting, international relations, even the luxury uh, business, I think you definitely need to have a glimpse at Geneva if you really want to go in for it. And of course, as a student, I can definitely tell you it's a very relaxed life. It's a very, um, it's a disciplined life, but at the end of the day, you can have fun and at the same time, uh, put in an effort to sort of, you know, um, they get a job, get an internship. Bagging an internship at the UN is the biggest thing you can have out there on your CV. Um, students really crave for an internship at the UN and we can help you get that. So anyone interested in international relations, give me a shout. Um, lastly, you have the Munich campus, which is uh, one of, I would say, again, like a price campus for us. Um, you know, there are no um, there are no weaknesses in this campus as much as I try and think about it from every aspect. Um, you know, I can I can talk to the cars come home about Munich because it is such a great campus. 
Um, just to let you know, in terms of the location, we are located at 28th Reason Jose, which is right opposite the ground where the Oktoberfest happens every year. Um, the Oktoberfest, for those of you all who are not aware of it, is a beer drinking festival which happens um, every year in, um, in uh, Germany, in Munich to be specific, um, and attracts about five to seven million tourists into the city every year. Um, so that's around the time our October intake starts as well. So it's a very exciting time of the year for our students. Um, in terms of, of course, the, the companies located around the campus, you have HP, you have Siemens, Allianz, which is just about 10 minutes walking distance from the campus. Um, again, we're located 10 minutes away from Marine Platz, which is um, the city center in Munich. As you can see, you can see the picture um, right over here on your screen and we're located 10 minutes from there. Um, from an economic perspective, you know, there are three things to remember. Uh, one is that the unemployment rate in Munich is really low. Okay, it's basically 4% um, has compared to other cities in Germany that could rank at about a 9 or 10%. Um, you've got really, you've got the uh, average salary, uh, monthly salary, which is higher as compared to other cities in Germany as well. And Munich has been basically termed as a Silicon Valley of Germany. And that is how fruitful it is in terms of jobs. Students get all sorts of jobs. They get part-time jobs, they get working contracts, they get internships, they get full-time jobs. So there's no sort of, um, I would say, uh, you know, a low capacity of jobs available. No, there's a very high capacity of jobs available. Um, you know, companies are always looking at recruiting students in whichever field you are in. Um, so in that sense, I think you should, you know, not worry about it, but it's one of the strongest, it's got one of the strongest employment growth in Germany. So I think if you're looking at Germany, you should be looking at Munich and you should be looking at a EU business school. That is one thing that I would definitely ask you to, you to think about into more. The digital campus, as I mentioned, is the online campus. Not many students go for it, but it's present. In case students get delayed with their visa, they do start um, with the digital campus and then um, you know, come onto campus as soon as they have their visa in hand. The reasons to study at EU, as I mentioned through the first few slides, is that we're very international. We have about 140 different nationalities on all our campuses. Class sizes are very small. Um, and I think there are three points that I'd really like to mention in terms of the reasons to study at EU. When students ask me why I picked EU and you know, why I had such a, such a successful journey at EU, uh, point number one is really my professors. Okay, professors are working professionals. They're not only teaching you at EU, but they either own their own firms or they're consulting students of, uh, they're consulting companies when they're not teaching, which is really great because it's a lot of fresh input from the market uh, into the classroom. It's a lot of um, discussions, a lot of um, debate, uh, a lot of fresh ideas that flow in, which sometimes help the, helps the professor and in turn has students who are learning a lot. That's one thing that I really liked about it. The second thing is obviously being established for 50 years. EU Business School has got a lot of connections and a lot of network. Um, and I think that is what is the DNA of the business school. And I really like the fact that, uh, you know, they bring in guest speakers. We'll talk about that a little more, but they bring in a lot of guest speakers, the CEO of Manchester City, the CEO of Doha Bank, um, you know, the, um, the CEO of Jason Yu, which is Lin Yu, the, CE, um, the, the country head of Google for Luxembourg in Belgium. All these people that you, you know, meet on a bi-weekly basis on campus, you're in a classroom of 30 students, not more than that, interacting with these high-end professionals. It gives you an edge above all the other students. It gives you an edge above, um, you know, people in general. To have it, to you know, know these people, to connect with them on LinkedIn, to share with them your business card. I think that's a great opportunity, and of course, the experience of of studying at EU Business School. Of course, I'm I'm from India, I studied over here, and then when I went there, um, it was obviously something like a breakthrough when you have classes wherein you're not sort of you know parrot learning as they call it. Um, and you're not learning and grabbing information and just putting it on a paper. You're understanding it. You're putting it down in your own words. Um, there's continuous evaluation. Um, you know, you have your midterm exam, you have assignments, you have the final exam. So there's continuous evaluation throughout the semester, which really helps you up your average and also up your GPA in general. 
This is just a screenshot to show you the diversity that we have in EU Business School in terms of where our students come from, um, you know, in terms of the nationalities. Um, as Richard mentioned, we have a lot of programs. We have a lot of dual degree programs as well. So first, I would like to tackle in the bachelor program. The bachelor program is a three-year program with six semesters. You have the EU Business School bachelors on the left-hand side, which has about seven different specializations. Most students at a bachelor's level would go in for the bachelor's in business administration uh, because it, it covers all the topics of management, right? From marketing, the sales, to advertising, or finance, accounting, it has it all, right? Uh, but some students are a little confused as to what they want to do. So they will start off with a bachelor's in business administration because always remember the first year of the bachelor's is the same for all students across all specializations. And then what they do is from the second year onwards, if they decide to go into a specialization like sports management or international relations, students can always change their specialization once they're on campus. The BA Honours in Business Management, we have, again, we have about nine specializations, finance, marketing, business technology, supply chain, and logistics. So this is, again, a three-year program. The only difference is that this has seven semesters instead of six. The first year will have three semesters, and the second and third years will have two semesters each. For this, we have only two intakes. We have October and we have February. The BA Honours in Business Management, in business, sorry, is a dual degree or program with Dublin Business School as well as EU Business School, wherein you have techno management courses, which include business law, cloud computing, and information systems. Um, moving on, we have the master's program. Um, I don't know if some of you are looking for bachelor's or master's. If you have any questions, put them in the chat box or feel free to unmute yourselves and ask. But coming to the master's program, um, MBA and the MBA with the pathways, they are all one-year programs with three different semesters. The master's programs have nine different specializations that you can choose from. A lot of students, again, go in for a master's in management because it gives you an overall development of with each and every avenue from the management programs. Or else, if you are very certain about what you want to do in life, what you want to accomplish, and if you have a specialization like finance that you want to go in for, you will only be doing finance-related courses. Um, the intakes for this program will be October, January, and March. So Jan and March of 2023 are the intakes that are uh, available and possible to apply for currently. So is the October, but October is obviously a little further away. The MBA program has uh, about 11 different specializations at this point, right? From communications and PR, global banking and finance, digital business, design management, blockchain management. With the MBA program, the great thing about the structure is that you have, again, a one-year program, where in the first two semesters, you have co-management courses. And in the last semester, you focus on a specialization, which can be any one of these. So the specialization semester technically starts in March. If you are starting in March, you will be starting with your specialization, which means that you don't have the chance to change your specialization later. Um, the MBA with the Pathways, again, a dual degree program with Dublin Business School, which brings about a few techno management courses, which includes project management, cloud computing, and information systems. Again, only two entries at this point, October and January. So over here, unfortunately, for some reason, I don't have the bachelor's admission requirements, but I would like to tell you it's very straightforward and simple. We require your high school mark sheets, your proof of English proficiency, which would be your IELTS or your TOEFL. IELTS overall score will be six. If you do not have your IELTS scorecard, no worries, just the IELTS registration will do to process your application. Currently, the computer-based test dates are available and the results come in much quicker than the paper-based test, which can take you about four to five working days, as compared to the paper-based test, which is approximately about 14 working days. Um, a copy of your CV, two letters of recommendation, and essay, which is basically topical. You have five different topics and you choose one of those five topics to write an essay on. Um, and in terms of the bachelor's program, we if you apply to Munich particularly, we need something called the test AS. Um, it is basically um, um, uh, you know, an aptitude test that is done by students depending on the subjects they want to do it into, uh, but it is required for the German uh, visa procedure from now on. So any student going for the bachelor's from Munich, test AS will be mandatory. 
Uh, for the master's of the MBA program, you have these documents mentioned on the screen, your bachelor degree and mark sheet, TOEFL IELTS, as it's mentioned over here, the IELTS requires for 6.5 overall. If you have a six overall, we can still consider your application. Again, TOEFL or IELTS registration is, is good enough for the application process. Copy of the CV, two letters of recommendation, and again, an essay with this topic. The tuition fee structure, we're basically we're going, to, we're going to be looking at two different tuition fee structures, depending again on when you're applying for the program. So anyone that is going for Jan or March, these two semesters, this is going to be the tuition fee cost. So if you're looking at a bachelor's program, it's going to be 6,750 per semester at Barcelona in Munich. Um, Geneva would be 14,490 Swiss francs per semester. Um, for the master's program, it's going to be 4,750 again at Munich and Barcelona, 9,890 Swiss francs. The MBA program is going to be 6,950 at Munich and Barcelona and 12,600. You're not going to remember all of this, but I'm happy to send you the PDF once the session is completed. Richard can share it with all of you if, if you're interested in, in the tuition structure again. But approximately in Indian rupees, what I can tell you is that the masters will be ranging between 11 to 12 lakhs for the entire year. The MBA will be approximately 18 lakhs for the year and the bachelor's will be approximately about 11 and a half to 12 lakhs for the year. So that is something that you can, you can keep in mind. We also do offer scholarships. We have early bird discounts as well. So there are three different um, scholarships or discounts available at this moment. First, we'll tackle the merit-based scholarship where you can get up to a 30% on the semester tuition fees. The reason why I'm saying semester tuition fees and not full year tuition fees is let's say you buy the 10% merit-based scholarship, it will be applicable to the first semester tuition fee. In order for it to be applicable on the second or third semester tuition fee, you will need to maintain a GPA of 3.7 um, during your time at EU Business School. Um, the requirements is you need to have a GPA of 3.7 or above. IELTS score should be 6.5 or 7 scholarship essay and a Skype interview with uh, our career, with our um, uh, you know, scholarship committee as well. Normally, it says up to 50%, but I can tell you now, the, the highest we've ever uh, really uh, granted a scholarship is 20%. So I would say anywhere between 10 to 20% is what we're looking at for the merit-based scholarship. Um, from the student ambassador program perspective, it's a 2,000 euro, um, uh, you know, a scholarship, which is flat on the year fee, no maintenance of GPA is necessary. Um, the requirements are slightly lower. The GPA needs to be 2.5 and above. IELTS requirements are 6.5 or 7, scholarship, essay, and Skype interview. What you need to understand is student ambassador program. Um, each recruitment manager, which is me, we have two each. So I only have two student ambassador programs which are open, uh, which is either for the Jan, March, or the October intake next year. So if you are interested, grab it as soon as possible because it's it's a good scholarship. The next scholarship that we have is the early birth scholarship, which is anywhere between 5 to 10 percent for um, the March and the October 2023 intakes at this point in time. So whatever percentage you are given, either 5, 7 or 10 percent, it will be applied on the total your tuition fee. And that discounted amount will be deducted from your third semester tuition fee. There's no additional requirements uh, for this early birth scholarship, which is great. There's no GPA to be maintained, which is also great. The only thing that you need to remember is if you're applying for the early birth scholarship and you get approved for it, you will have only two weeks to pay the initial advanced tuition fee, which can be 3,200 in case of a master's or MBA. And for a bachelor's, it's 2,200 euros. I hope I'm not going too fast. If there's anything that is missed out, not understood, please raise your hand, put it in the chat box, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Okay, so this is what I was talking about, which is the learning from leaders series wherein you get to interact with high-end professionals from different parts of the industry. Um, John Claude Beaver was an excellent guest to have on campus. He is um, the president of uh, the watch division of a Zenit watches and who's also on the board for the LVMH group, which is the which is technically LV. Um, the CEO of Doha Bank, he I know he retired as of uh, June this year, but he is the ex-CEO of Doha Bank. He has held this position for 15 years. 
I, in fact, studied with his daughter at the EU Business School Geneva campus. Um, I'm mentioning this because, as I mentioned, it is a VIP campus. It is uh, some place where you really make your connections uh, to last your lifetime. Um, we also have a lot of activities. Um, we have the Amazon Web Services, which happens at the Munich campus every summer. Uh, we are the only business school in the whole of the Bavarian region in Germany that apply uh, that actually offers the AWS um, uh, certification. Um, and it's really in you know interesting considering the you know the overall demand of uh, cloud computing services in the industry. I think it's a great program. You have the Young Entrepreneurs Program that was actually started by the Swiss campuses. Um, Change the World Model UN happens in New York, which we also participated on a yearly basis in. And of course, you have the student clubs depending on, um, this one is mostly finance based, but you have other student clubs that can be started by students, um, you know, as long as we have a petition in place. A lot of sports activities, uh, football, basketball, um, uh, tennis, um, you know, badminton, um, all these activities that we compete with on a, on a, you know, or at least on a city or a country level. Um, we, we send our, our students out there to compete. Barcelona is obviously a little bit more active than Munich in terms of this, uh, but Munich is definitely active as well. A lot of trips planned out throughout the year, charity events, and of course, being a part of the student board is also something we look at. Um, in terms of the accommodation and the monthly cost of living, um, true for some, not true for the other, it really depends on how you manage your budget. For Barcelona, I would say it's wildly accurate. Um, you are looking at approximately nine, uh, about 900 to 1200 euros for the month, uh, which would include your, um, you know, your rent, um, transport. Um, we can also look into insurance and of course the, your other living expenses as well. Um, Switzerland is more accurate. I would say on average 1600 euro or 1600 Swiss francs a month would be uh, feasible. Um, for the accommodation as well as living expenses. This is provided you find good accommodation. I've been, you know, have had been in Switzerland. I can definitely help you with accommodation, but I would say 1600 is great because there are a lot of tactics um, where you can save money in terms of your groceries. Uh, Geneva does share a border with France. So a lot of students studying in Geneva do cross the border and pick up their groceries from France since it's cheaper. That's what I used to do as a student. That's a little tip, but you can definitely decrease your cost in Switzerland as well. Um, in Munich, um, however, what I would say is the, um, the living cost per month could be anywhere between 1,100 euros to about 1,200 euros. 1,400 is a bit too high, as I would, I would say, um, for the living cost, but a shared accommodation can be anywhere between 600 to 700 euros, and the private accommodation could be anywhere between 800 to 900 euros. So wherever you are, I mean, at the end of the day, we're Indians, we will definitely find ways to cut our costs. That's for sure. But there are definitely ways, even in Europe, of cutting your costs. Um, you know, once you start grocery shopping, you will understand where to pick up what from which what is cheaper where. So it it obviously takes time. But I would say the first month, you can obviously budget yourself at a slightly higher cost, maybe at around these prices that are mentioned on the screen. And then from the second month onwards, you can obviously look at more realistic prices um, where you will have your budget under control as well. Um, we just have a few EU services. We have the academic counselors, personalized approach as well, and of course the safety on campus. Um, yeah, no mask are required anymore on campus where we're not really following a lot of the rules with the, the Europe in general has dropped them. But yeah, your academic counselors are available and we do have a personalized approach. Just one thing I would like to point out is the languages. We do provide German uh, language classes on campus, which is an A1 and an A2 level. Career services, in a sense, you know, we've spoken about the German economic uh, condition, Barcelona as well, and so is Germany. But what I would say is uh, overall, we have a 96% placement rate when it comes to our students getting an internship or a full-time job uh, post-completion of the program. Um, a lot of students get internships to start off with if they're freshers from, um, from college, uh, which then converts into a full-time job. Students with slightly more work experience normally can bag a full-time job as well. What I'm trying to say is that if you are a fresher out of college, you should still apply for a master's directly. 
uh, you get over and done with. You're a, a lot younger and you're a lot more flexible with things, so it becomes easier. Uh, but your internships during the program, after the program, definitely help you to bag a full-time job as well. Um, we help you with personalized one-on-one -on -one interviews, um, you know, cover letters, CVs. All of this needs to be tailored according to each job you're applying to. So we do help you with all of that. And of course, our networking events is something that really helps at the end of the day as well. The annual talent day happens every year at each campus. And we have about 10 to 15 companies coming onto campus to talk to our students and to offer them internship and job opportunities as well. These are some of the companies that we've collaborated with over the years. You have Allianz, you have Amazon, um, Coca-Cola, Google, Rolex, uh, Turkish Airlines, Siemens, W Hotels. So, you know, I would say in um, companies from different industries catering to the different specializations we have, if you want to put it in a nutshell. We have the alumni network. This is going to be um, a little bit too much, but we have 28,000 um, in, you know, alumni. Uh, we have a very active LinkedIn alumni um, group. So if you want to join that, if you want to reach out to alumni, please do so. It would be, you know, a great learning, um, you know, a great way to learn about you as well. But that brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, I'm happy to take any um, questions if you have them.